I told her that I was going to give her a shout out for bringing the attention of her friends to my videos, so thank you, Helen. A little midget. Hey guys, Divi here. In honor of the release of Batman Arkham Origins, I'm bringing you guys some Batman themed reviews. And I figured that I'm going to go ahead and start off with something that I saw on the PSN for sale. And I figured, you know what? Five bucks for this. Let's go ahead and play it. And so here's my review of Lego Batman 2 DC Superheroes. Traveler's Tales games, not to be confused with Telltale Games, the creators of The Walking Dead episodic video game, much like how everybody who knows a thing or two about video games always does, are known for making the Lego games, especially the licensed property Lego games like Lego Indiana Jones, Lego Pirates of the Caribbean, Lego Star Wars. And of course it was imminent that they were going to make a Lego Batman game. But Lego Batman 2 DC Super Heroes is actually the first Lego game to use an actual voice cast to take to lend their voices to the characters in this game, uh, as well as an original storyline. Because up until that point, they've had they have always made the Lego the Lego games based on the movies that they were that they were borrowing from. They would always talk like they were in a Sims game where you know all they would do is go mm -hmm. ah, you're and then they made the Lord of the Rings game and that game did have dialogue, but it was literally the entire audio track from the movies just completely lifted out of it and they just put it in the game. So if you were thinking that Ian McKellen and Elijah Wood were actually lending their voices to the characters in that game, then you're mistaken because all they did was just take the sound bites, the sound bites from the movie and they just put it in the game. Here, however, you got voice talents such as Troy Baker who is voicing Batman in this game, who's going to be voicing the Joker in Arkham Origins and he has been doing a lot of great voices recently from Booker DeWitt from Bioshock Infinite to Joel from The Last of Us and you also got Nolan North in there playing a few characters, which I'm kind of torn on because part of me kind of wishes that there wasn't any dialogue because when there wasn't any dialogue in those previous uh, Traveler's Tales Lego games, I don't know, I just found it a little bit more charming because there was no voice to, I don't want to say distract us, but there's, there was just no voice that we needed to worry about matching a certain character. So whenever they wouldn't talk and they would just make, you know, faces or they would just make certain uh, gesticulations and that alone made us laugh, I like that. But then another part of me kind of feels like not only was the dialogue, the dialogue good for a Lego game, but the voice talent be behind this game was just superb. You know, Troy Baker is great as Batman. I can't remember the guy's name, the actor's name who played the Joker, but he was outstanding. I, I, for a second, I actually thought that it was Mark Hamill coming back to play the Joker. Uh, Clancy Brown was great, once again, as Lex Luthor. He's, uh, I believe, according to his IMDb page, he has been voicing Lex Luthor for quite some time throughout various, you know, I think it was the Superman animated series to other variations of the Superman uh, animated, you know, movies and TV shows and that sort of thing. And something that I wasn't expecting the story for this game is actually pretty damn good. Now, it's not the most riveting form of screenwriting I have seen in a video game. It just feels like a movie. No, but for a Lego movie, I was not expecting them to go ahead and come up with an original plot that would fit into, that could only fit with a licensed property like Batman, because after all, he is the world's greatest detective, as is his moniker. So what better way to make a good not only a good Lego game, but also a good Batman game by making the plot an investigative, uh, uh, a, a, an almost a crime story where Batman has to figure things out. Because right, uh, from the get-go, I thought that this was going to be, being that it's a Lego game and being that, and because of the fact that it's a Lego game, it's a game that is gearing mostly for kids, of course. It's Lego. But I was really surprised figuring out that the plot actually has a, a good sense of mystery to it. And I'm not going to go into detail because I, honestly, I think that the more, the more, the freshest you go into the story, and I know it's it's a Lego game, it's just a Lego game. But I got to be honest, you know, I I didn't see any of the trailers. I didn't know what the story was about. All I knew is that being being that the subtitle is called DC Superheroes, and I know that Superman becomes involved, it's going to have to do with the Joker and Lex Luthor because why else would Batman and Superman? and Robin are going to have to team up in order to, to, to take them down. I mean, who else could they take down if, and who else are they going to have to come together in order to defeat? So I knew those guys were involved, but I didn't know the extent of the story. So when it turns out that there's some actual good mystery to why, it, what, what is the plan, what is Joker and Lex Luthor's plan and why are they doing it? I was, I was going along for the ride and I thought that it was actually a pretty decent story that not only 
it's easy enough for kids to understand. The kids are they're going to be playing this game because it's a Lego game. But it's also a nice little a nice little throwback to people who are actual fans of Batman. And even though I didn't think it was going to be as charming as the previous Lego games that Traveler's Tales have made by not having any dialogue and just having the Lego characters practically be mimes, but char charming mime mimes. This game still ended up being charming with the addition of an actual voice cast. Now the gameplay is almost no different than what any other Le LEGO game has come out to date. So if you played a LEGO game, this practically plays the exact same way. The only little, you know, differences, the only little tweaks would be that being that it's a Batman game, they have to add, add things that would cater to Batman fans and would make sense because of the fact that it's Batman. So grappling hooks, batarangs, that kind of stuff, it's all added in there to make sense with the characters that are involved. And not only with Batman, but also with characters like Superman or other particular characters that come in later on in the story that I don't want to spoil. But whenever you change to a different character, because like, you know, much like the previous Lego games, this is meant to be a, a co-op game. Even though you could play it by yourself and you could just have the other character to be, or, or, or other characters, could just be a, a AI driven characters. Uh, a second player could drop in at any moment. All they have to do is just turn on that second controller, drop in, and boom, co-op. Which is actually one of the things that I've always loved about the LEGO games, is that you don't have to select the co-op mode from the main menu, wait for somebody to to log on or to, to say, start on, on the controller. Somebody just needs to pick up the controller, press start, and boom, they're in the game. And while solving different puzzles, building certain objects to use in those puzzles, and breaking apart things in the environment to collect coins much like in the like in the Super Mario universe where you don't have to collect every single coin that exists in this game but it's possible and that's the only way that you're going to get 100% completion is to collect every single coin that is in this game and i'm not i'm not that kind of completist i'm not that kind of nut but i will admit that there were moments where i just couldn't leave uh, a box Un, uh, you know, unpunished. I had to, you know, beat the living crap out of that thing in order to get as many coins as possible. That w you know, because I don't know, it just feels addicting. Just like in the Super Mario universe, I don't have the urge to collect every single coin, but I still had the urge to at least punch a few blocks here and there to just get some coins for myself. These games have some sort of spell on you that'll make you do that. It's it's kind of addicting. And much like the other Lego games, it looks and sounds the same. Everything looks blocky and cartoony, but it's supposed to. It's Lego. However, keeping in the tradition of the previous Lego games, because you can tell right off the bat that people at Traveler's Tales are huge fans of the games that they're make that are based on the licensed properties. You can tell that they love those licensed properties. And they include little details in to to tell you that, yeah, we love these things. The one, number one thing that I loved about this game, the inclusion of both Danny Elfman's score for, you know, Batman, the original Batman from 89 with Michael Keaton and Jack Nicholson, the Tim Burton Batman, the inclusion of his score that always gives me goosebumps, as well as the other the other theme that also that probably gives me just a few more goosebumps would probably be the Superman theme by John Williams. There are certain moments where you play as Superman and whenever you do you got that that fanfare kicking in by John Williams and I'm just like oh damn it. And little details like something that's in the background or something that's actually kind of close like for example sometimes I would see a certain Lego piece and it would literally say Lego on there, like an actual, like the actual Legos that you get out of the box. That certain, uh, certain pieces have the the word Lego embroidered into it. Little details like that are very charming and very funny. And while on the subject of humor, I didn't find this game to be hilarious. I didn't find it to be very, uh, very funny, or at least as funny as the previous games. But it doesn't put a damper on the game. I still enjoy this game a lot. It's just I kind of wish that there was a little bit more humor. Uh, incorporated into it, but then again, it is Batman, and Batman is supposed to be a more of a serious character, so you can't go too crazy with the humor at, at, like you did with the previous games. So I kind of, I guess, I kind of uh, respect the more subdued humor to kind of fit in with the Batman tone. And like I said already, the story felt quite original. It felt almost something out of a comic book, but in a good way, where Obviously, Batman comes from the comics, but I felt like this could have been a nice little animated movie. Actually, I think it did get made into like a short 30-minute special kind of thing that they showed on Cartoon Network or something like that. But I loved it even more that it was a video game. But it could have been a comic on its own. Without having the Lego name in it, it could have been a really good 
Batman Superman crossover story. And even though the game is pretty short but sweet, I mean it is a Lego game so it doesn't need to be like 20 or so hours long because obviously this is catered to kids as well. It's more of a family game. You know, even kids games are the games, much like movies, are the games that kids are going to love but then, you know, older gamers like myself, they're just going to be like, okay, you know, this is meant for kids, it's just not for me. A family game, in much like a family movie, is where the game of the movie, not only can, uh, can kids enjoy it, but adults are going to enjoy it as well. And this is definitely a family game where kids could love it because it's Batman, adults can love it because it's Batman. But despite being short and sweet, there were points towards the end where I figured, okay, this is where it's going to end. But then it just kept on going and I didn't really know where it was going to end because it just had me along for the ride. The only problems that I can think of with this game are some technical hiccups. And by technical hiccups, I mean some kind of frustrating ones. There were certain points where the AI for my partner was stuck somewhere. I don't know what would happen, but there was a point where my partner was Superman and for some reason he would fly into the air and just go like this and not even move and I needed him to do something while me as Batman needed to do another thing that only I could do and the other thing that Superman needed to do only he could do because he was Superman he had a certain power that he needed to use and for some reason he was just stuck there in the middle of the air not doing anything and I, st and I had to start the game over because because of this glitch and there were other times where my character would get stuck in a certain area where I don't know if it was the design or the the you know the walls that were d designed I don't know what, what what the problem was but for, s for some reason my character was stuck down there and I just couldn't jump out of it and once again I had to restart the game all over every time a game makes me restart it some points off fortunately that's the only bad thing that I can think about this game and I enjoyed it more than I thought I would and I found it to be one of the more surprising games that I've played in a while because I figured that it was just going to be a straightforward Lego Batman game where it's just Batman and Robin. And speaking of Robin, I loved how this game made me sympathetic for, for made me sympathize for Robin because, you know, Robin, I've never been a huge fan of Robin. I mean, there were times where he's annoying, mainly when he's played by this guy. Sorry, Chris, but I like you in NCIS. But here, I really felt for him because he has always gotten the short end of the stick when it comes to the attention that he deserves or the credit that he deserves for the things that he has helped out with on Batman's adventures. And here, I felt for him because I love how they brought that to the, to the forefront. Plus, much like other characters that you get to play as in this game, there are certain things that only he can do, so that makes the character... Uh, a lot more uh, a lot more important to not only the plot but the game as a whole but I figured it was just gonna be a straightforward story of just Batman Robin and with the inclusion of Superman just having to stop Joker and Lex Luthor from doing bad things and just get from point A to point B but it ended up being a more surprising game than just that and one of the more surprising I keep figuring out new things about this game as I go on with this review but the last thing that I'm gonna comment on is another thing that surprised me was that instead of just going from setting to setting and just fade out fade in fade out fade in this game also gives you the ability to kind of free roam in some way throughout Gotham City by using either the Batmobile or Robin's bike or some other kind of a vehicle and you get to explore the city even though you don't get to do it a whole lot because the only other things that you could do besides the main story is also free play especially after you um, you know you've known this if you have played a lego game you know that after beating the main story you can free play you can choose another character you have unlocked and go back and pl either replay the story missions or just roam around the city and do things that only the character that you unlocked can do and one of the things that I wasn't uh, expecting uh, out of this game was being able to roam around Gotham City on the Batmobile and, you know, discover either the gold bricks. Because besides the story, you can also uncover an awful lot of stuff. Like I said, you can collect every single coin imaginable. Please let me know if you can actually do that. And if you have the iron will and patience to do that. But you can also collect the golden bricks, collect those little Batman symbolized cans that when you collect them you can construct a certain object that kind of stuff the, the spare stuff you can do on the side you can also do that throughout Gotham City when you're not doing a story mission and I enjoyed the, the, the inclusion of that even though I didn't play it for that long but I like that it's there still I talked enough the only things that I didn't like about it were some of the technical glitches but besides that I really enjoyed this game I'm gonna give it an 8.9 out of 10 which is a B plus thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time